Hey folks, this is Shane from Forum TV. Today we're going to try and get our Nissan Leaf motor working. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. So the last few weeks we've been working on the inverter and trying to get an open source logic board uh, integrated into the inverter and sending messages across. And today we're going to try and take that one step further and actually use it to control the Nissan Leaf motor that we have here. Um, no idea how long this is going to take me. Uh, I've started to get my head around the software, but um, as with a lot of these things, understanding the theory is one thing, but actually putting it into practice is another. So why don't you join us while we um, start working on this. So the first thing we're going to do is to do a little bit more wiring um, because this isn't a kind of one-way street when it comes to communication. Yes, we're sending power to the motor to turn it, but the only way that the inverter can properly do that if it, is if it's getting signals back from the um, motor telling it you know, what state the motor is in, what position it's in. Um, we have all the wiring for that, but because I'm not using the native leaf um, adapt or connector, um, I'm going to have to cut that out and splice in some new wires so that we can hook it up to, uh, to this and pull in the resolver and um, motor temperature signals. So let's take a look. So those of you who've been watching for a while will probably recognize the um, subset of the leaf kind of drive unit harness um, that we stripped out from the the overall piece a few videos ago. Um, as I said recently I'm not going to use the uh, leaf uh, connector uh, for the for the new inverter logic board uh, so I'm gonna not going to be using this uh, but I will need this side of things. So this is the connector for the resolver on the motor that basically tells the inverter where um, where the where the motor is in its in its turning cycle. So I want to take the wires that are going into this um, off of this connector so I can connect them in through through my own one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wires, but I'm going to put a um, a spade connector on each one so that if I want to use this again at some point, which I do because I do want to get the can working, um, I can just plug it back in rather than having to worry about um, trying to splice anything like that. So this is the resolver cable and if we work it back we can remove a fair few of these wires that I'd uh, taped all together. Bit of a spaghetti junction. All right, so these are resolver wires. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, figure out which one's which based on the um, pinout diagram I have, and then use that to to mark them. I'll mark two sides of them and then cut, and that way I won't lose any information. Um, and then this is a, a power that's heading out, um, so I'll take that as well. So here we go.
And there we have it. Uh, spade connectors on this side, so I'm going to tidy them up. Um, put some covers on them and then start creating some additional wires. And try where possible to, to keep the colours as, as close a match as I can to, to what's here, just to make it as easy as possible for me to figure out in the future. Alright, there we go. Uh, the loom's been, I guess, spliced and is pretty much ready to go into our, or to connect into our inverter. We plugged our, I guess, motor information wire into the motor itself. So that's the resolver wires, so the two excitation wires, and then the sine and cosine pairs coming out of it, along with the motor temperature um, wires as well. So these have been plugged in at the motor using the standard connector, and then we've got them spliced using the uh, cables we just made up and connected into the inverter um, using the, the pins that I soldered in previously. So this allows us to run the inverter in closed loop mode. So it's sending power to the motor, but also receiving data back from it on where the, um, the position is of it. And this allows us to um, more accurately control it, which means we can use the throttle that we wired in earlier to try and uh, adjust the speed of the motor once we actually manage to get it spinning. spinning. How are we going to get it spinning, you might ask? And that's a very good question. So the logic board uses all the standard inputs um, into the actual IGBT driver boards and the error return boards that the LEAF does, uh, so it controls the inverter in exactly the same way as the, the native logic board did, sending um, PWM signals to this connector here to then dictate what comes out of the, um, out of the three phases. So we need some way to control that, and that's done through the, the software on the logic board. It's very configurable and can be used for a lot of different applications but I've managed through the kind of community that's built up around it to get some um, initial parameter files that other people have used on the leaf motor, which will hopefully give me a start. I mean, I'm not starting um, with a totally blank piece of paper. So let's give it a go and see if we can get this motor spinning. We can now see uh, movement on the potentiometer setting when the throttle is twisted and also we can see things like the motor temperature values coming in from the the motor itself so we've rather haphazardly wired our uh, motor to the inverter and this is purely for testing purposes at low voltage um, I won't use this wiring method for anything higher than what we're working with at the moment. So now we're going to see what happens when we actually switch on the inverter and try and put some, put some power through it. So to switch the inverter on, we're going to do it the proper way rather than through the software. So first off, we need to once the um, it's showing up properly, we'll need to touch the uh, a 12 volt to the start pin on that row in there. I'll tell you which one it is specifically in a moment, and then we'll need to put um, 12 volts to the forward pin, uh, which is basically telling the inverter once it started to. Uh, send signals to move the motor forward in a forward motion. Um, if I don't do that, I can still send messages to it, but it's not going to do anything. It'll just uh, just kind of sit there. So let's see see what happens. To start the inverter, we're going to apply 12 volts to the start pin. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear a high-pitched uh, squeal coming out of it. And then we're going to appear, apply 12 volts to the forward pin. 
that one needs to stay, stay consistently on. So with that applied, we are starting to get values coming in from the resolver. Um, so uh, let's see what happens when we turn the throttle. All right, so we're hearing, I can hear something coming from the motor. Um, I just can't, uh, we just can't see it moving yet. So let's uh, play around with some settings and see if we can uh, do anything with it. All right, so we've been doing some investigation following our previous attempt to turn the motor and it looks like I managed to get one of the wires uh, going from the resolver into the inverter mixed up. Well, two of the wires mixed up. So I had a an excitation wire going to one of the cosine um, ports. So that was obviously screwing up what the inverter thought about where the motor was. Uh, so that could have been part, part of our problem. So we've got that fixed up. Um, I've reset all the parameters, reset the inverter, so now we'll see if we can turn the motor again. It ain't pretty, it sounds chuggy, but it's turning. Um, it took a while to find some settings that worked, and now we just need to refine those and uh, see if we can get it turning a bit more smoothly. So we've played around with some settings, it is turning a little bit more smoothly, um, which is really great to see. So we know we can control this motor with the inverter. Um, there's still a lot of settings that I need to play around with to try and get this balanced out. Not really help that I'm testing it at um, about 50 volts. Um, so the issue that I found previously was I was trying to use the work of others to get this to turn um, but the parameters that I was able to get from other people they had used on um, full pack voltage so I had to adjust certain aspects of it to pick up the fact that I was working on a much lower voltage. Um, it's further complicated by the fact I'm using some pretty small lead acid batteries so there's a lot of voltage sag when they um, when there's uh, any sort of draw on them, so I'm seeing voltages drop down to about 20 volts from the, uh, the 15 there. So, uh, yeah, complicating matters a bit, but we're getting it turning, and so we'll see if we can get it turning a little bit more smoothly. The motor moving slowly uh, at 50 volts, I've increased the number of batteries, battery cells that we're using um, to 11, which gives us about 140 volts. Um, the rest of the setup is the same. We're manually recharging and then switching on the inverter by well, sliding the contact onto the battery. Um, so the inverter's on, or inverter's powered, not switched on, and sending uh, signals via the, the Wi Fi. A little oversight in moving from uh, moving up the voltages. Um, I've been a bit lazy when I was using the doing low voltage for short periods of time, and I had simply um, had the uh, 
power going into the capacitor through the resistor. Um, figured it was getting there anyway, and it's one less thing to worry about. Um, but of course, resistors heat up when they get power going through them. <laughs> and we've managed to melt away all, all the polystyrene underneath it, which is pretty cool. Um, hopefully I haven't breathed in any of the fumes. So gonna step away from this for a moment, get the uh, proper circuit sorted out and then get back on with testing. really pleased with that. Um, I did not know if we were going to manage to get the motor working at this stage or if if potentially there was something wrong with some of the, the parts. You know, all, all this stuff is second hand, it's from a damaged car um, and while these things are well built, you know, there's always a chance that something could have been broken. Likewise, I could have screwed up or did slightly with the um, with making the, the adapter board or I could have damaged something on the logic board itself or in the inverter when I was doing some of my investigations in the past. So to actually get the motor running is quite an achievement and yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So next steps for this, we're probably gonna put the motor and inverter um, to one side, clear out this space so we can start working on some bits for the car. Um, you know, we've got, I've got a few more cosmetic things I want to do, but the most important thing is I've got to start building out some way of actually housing this within the, um, within the Porsche, uh, transmission kind of bay area. So I know it's going to be tight and we'll have to see how we get, get on with that, but that's for the, for another video. Um, you know, thanks so much for, for joining me on this journey. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, and as always, you know, any comments you have, any questions, please fire them through. If you've liked the video, um, please click on the like button. Uh, I'm pretty sure that YouTube's algorithms do, uh, do uh, kind of adapt to how, many, how much interaction a video has. So everything is well appreciated. Um, but till then, thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.